Welcome to the Old Fat Coach Podcast, featuring Russell Stutley, world leader pressure point fighting, national boxing coach, Cambodia. Prepare to get not only your martial arts boxing world rocked, but your whole world too. Here we are. Well, I'm, I'm, hi, Brian. I, I'm absolutely honoured by this because it's it's the man himself, Mr. Brian Jax. For those who don't know, and you should know, <laughs> Olympian, 10th Dan Judo, four times uh, Superstars champion, absolutely famous in the UK for, <laughs> for the dips and the squat thrusts. I still remember them. And, um, four Olympic the, the, Games. And the Olympic Games, yeah. I mean, four times, uh, and the British champion, European champion, this champion. I mean, the list goes on and on. I think tenth dan judo. Correct. Yeah, you got it all yeah. right. Don't worry. And um, I, I actually it's all met. In the past. Pardon? It's all in the past. It's all in the past. Yeah, but it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> everything is. Everything is. But. What, what I was really hoping to talk to you about was um, some of the, the physical and the mental training that you did to get ready for the Olympics, because that's a level that most people can only ever dream of. And, and yeah. just to, to get an idea of the mindset and the physicality behind getting ready for an Olympic Games. That would be a great... Well, well, as, you, as you know, I've been through four Olympics. The yeah. first one was in 1964 in Tokyo, um, and I was very lucky because the preparation for that Games was that I lived in Tokyo for a year and a half before the Games. Right. So I went there when I was 15 years old, and I stayed there till I was 16 and a half. Then I came back to England, got in the Olympic team, and then went back to, to Tokyo after that. So it was quite, uh, quite easy, really. I just trained in Japan for it, and, and that's the best place in the world. The second games was in uh, Mexico, but judo was only only an introductory game then because it was voted in in Mexico. But the training for that was much more difficult because obviously uh, you know you, you you've got to dedicate yourself to it. You've really got to dedicate to anything you do, as you know, in your boxing training. Um, the de the dedication is not only not only just physically training. But it's also your mental attitude. You've got to be mentally correct. You've got to make sure that you you are going to reach your goal. Yeah. Your goal is to get to the games. You've got to make sure. And to do that, whilst you're training, that's part of your thought pattern all the time. I'm training because of getting to the Olympic Games and because of the people that I've got to beat to get there. They're the ones that are making me train and they're the ones that are going to make me work even harder to get there. So I'm going to eliminate those people. So you have to keep all that in your mind. Um, uh, the third Olympic Games was in um, um, was in uh, Germany, Munich. Yeah. Yeah. Munich. Um, and for that Games, I had my father, who was also a very keen boxer, funny enough. Um, Dad trained me for that. He made me run up a hill one in four, which... Yeah took me at least 35 minutes to get to the top and he'd stand at the top saying I'd be thinking you're making me run this early he'd be saying to me no it's not me that's making you run there it's the people you've got to fight that are making you run there so you think about them all the time and that will make you work harder so, um, and then uh, basically then after all that those Olympics I went to the superstars to the superstars um, unfortunately I'm a I'm a qualified PE teacher, so I know a bit about different sports. Um, yeah. And uh, I asked my dad again to train me for the superstars. Um, and the first thing he said was, uh, well, do 400 arm dips a day and 400 squat thrusts a day. And I said, hey, Dad, I've, I've never done one, let alone 400. And he said, the first thing he said to me was, do you want me to train you? So I said, yeah. He said, we'll do 400 on bits of one squat for us every day. And he just walked away. And that was it. You know, it's your determination, isn't it, really? Yeah, um, yeah. It, it gets you through. What else but can I, I say? Well, I, I remember seeing you doing the dips. And, you know, other people were breaking down at 28, 
29, 30, 32, 34, whatever. And people were saying, oh, they did well, they did well. And then they said, now it's Brian Jackson, 78, 80. I think he did 100 on one of them. Yeah, 101 in a minute, yeah. Yeah, in, in, in 60 seconds. But, I mean, watching you, it's just like watching one of those, um, you know, Metronome. remember the old, yeah, and it, the old um, adverts on TV and in with that bunny that was just ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it was just like that, just nonstop. And the, yeah. and the squat thrust as well, I remember um, watching it. And there was, there was, I can't remember who it was, there was some other guy who did, did quite well. They did some, some Jody, like... Jody, Jody Schechter. Jody Schechter, yeah, he he did the first one to do the sliding method. Right. And he did he did quite well on it. He did about I think it was about ninety eight in a minute, but I did one hundred and eighteen. <laughs> I tried to do one a second, but I just missed it. Yeah, I mean that was just nuts. I mean, because I remember I, I can't remember which one it was. I mean, because I'm I'm fifty six, so I think in, it was. It was 1981, eight, maybe 80, from memory now. But you you went on last to do your squat thrust because you were, you poured some some oil on the floor, as I recall. Is that right? No, no, that was Jody Schechter who poured the oil on the floor. Oh, was it? But right. So, and then and then they were all up in arms about it. So what I did is I had a, a I had a, a piece of uh, material put on top of my shoe, which was frictionless. You could, Rub it on any surface and it would slide. And I did right. it like that. So I, I didn't. I didn't use the oil. Right. I just <laughs> remember the oil. Yeah. That was Jody Schechter did that definitely. Right. Right. The so, damn cheap. But you know, it, as far as people that are coming up and training concerned, you've just got to set your mind to doing it. Once you set your mind, that's it. You know, don't change your mind. Keep at it. Keep keep working, and it will come. You know, things will things will materialize. It's what I say to my boxers is, is get fit once. And they sort of don't understand what I mean. So if you do the hard work now and really get fit now, do it one time, get really fit, you've only got to maintain it. I've got my friend here. I hope he's listening to you. Are you listening to this, big man? <laughs> he, he is a very good friend of mine. We've been training together for the last three weeks. He started off 131 kilo. Yeah. And after three weeks, he's he's lost about five kilo already. Fantastic! But, but so he's on the he's on the right road. That's it. That's it's nice to hear things like that, isn't it? It that's really lovely, is. Yeah. But I say with the guys, if, you, if I say to him, get fit now, do the hard work now. You've only got to maintain it. But if you keep that's getting correct. in between fights and getting fat and lazy, you got to keep getting fit every time, and that's hard work. Exactly. <laughs> you, you Get fit once and stay fit for life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky now because I live here in Thailand, and uh, the weather's always very nice. So I, obviously, I can't run anymore because of my back. Um, you know the injuries I've had with my back, but I've been cycling a lot. So we cycle every day, and I keep fit that way. So you know, you've got to. You've got to do that now. <laughs> but the weather, the weather's the, the the key, isn't it? I mean, I'm only down the road in Cambodia, so <laughs> and it's got suddenly very hot here this week. You can't beat the weather here, can you? No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. I mean, it, I mean eight, it, it, eight, eight, eight of us went out this morning training, and it was lovely. We finished by ten. Went out eight o'clock in the morning, finished by ten o'clock. It was wonderful. Cool. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. You know, I mean, we, I mean, with the COVID thing. The boxers weren't there today, so I'm on my own. So I just got down the gym, done me 15 rounds. Thought can't do 20. It's too hot. <laughs> Come home, and that was it. Yeah. You still try? How old are you? 56. Well, it's lovely. You're still training harder. Yeah, yeah, it's every day. Yeah. Well, Monday yeah. to Friday, I train. I do me 15 to 20 rounds as hard as I can. <laughs> if I can't, if I can't do 20, I'll do 15 or whatever. And that's well, it. Hope it I hope in 20 years' time, when you're my age, you'll be doing the same thing. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. That's the, that's the, I never want to stop. That's the thing. That's the thing about martial arts. Though. You never want to yeah. stop. But if any of your listeners ever come this way, just tell them that I'm here. I've, I've yeah. run, a, I run a, a big hotel. We've got 
68 rooms and uh, it's called View D and if they ever want to come and have a look, they're more than welcome. We'll, we'll look after them. And we'll, we'll put a link to that on the thing if that's okay as well, yeah? I promise you, anyone that comes over, I'll look after them. It's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and, what, and what a fountain of information they got right there if they want to ask a question. I mean, <laughs> it's like, you can't get back, can you? No, mm. I've met a couple of people who were in the squad with you actually years a few years back. Um, yeah. Danny DeCosta. Danny, little Danny, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we did some teaching together because I he, I was back over in England for a few weeks doing some teaching and I met up with Danny and we just got on that house on fire. So we did some teaching together at a couple of places and he gave me some DVDs and that and he, he was non-stop speaking about you see you later sorry just saying goodbye to some of the guys here yeah, at the gym. yeah no worries he, he's just non-stop speaking about you well danny was a lovely little man because you know yeah. he passed away yeah 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 yeah, yeah. L yeah. lovely man i remember one story about danny we were at the european championship in in madrid and we yeah. were in the ball ring you know the big ball ring yeah it was empty but we, we just went, they took us there to have a look around the British team. And uh, people were coming in to watch a ball fight. It was, it was very early in the, in, the, in the day. And there was a guy walking around with a little tray in front of him selling watches and stuff like that. Danny bought the whole lot off of him and went around selling the watches. He was so <laughs> funny. He was up and down all the stairs. He, he was a lunatic, a great, great player and a great, great trainer. He trained very hard as well. Yeah, I mean, he, he was he, he, a great sense of humour as well. He, we were just cracking up most of the time with stuff. Lovely, lovely man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it, it was just a great time and we kept in touch and obviously until he passed. And it was, yeah, he, it was just a, the, the, the mindset, again, of people like yourselves attaining yeah, those levels is, is very different to most clubs. He, he became European champion. He did very exceptionally well. He was a very great player, lightest man ever to win the Europeans from Great Britain. Oh, oh really? I didn't know he was the lightest. Yeah, no, man, I knew he was a lightweight, yeah. but I didn't know. And he, yeah, it was he, he got a, a seniors title as well, I seem to recall. Yeah, yeah think... he won the senior British European. He won the, he won the European senior championships as a lightweight. He yeah. was British champion. Yeah, he was a great player. Very, very good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, and it's it's so nice. And you know, for me, knowing of you from TV and things like that and the martial arts, obviously, my background was karate, show of can and stuff. And I did judo for a while in Denmark when I lived there, but only for mm -hmm. eight months and nine months. I've not I, also, speaking I, also, I also did karate with in Japan with uh, Oyama. Oh, Masayama, yeah. Masayama, he killed the bull. I was at his dojo practicing with him when I was 15. Right, so you did Kai Kushinkai there with him, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kushinkai, yeah. 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 He's, he's second down. Yeah. Oh, you, you got second down? Middle. got these little flies around at the moment. Yeah, we haven't got anything like that here at the minute. I don't know why. They've all seemed to have... You're lucky. Lost. There's loads of Yeah, we, we, we're lucky over here. But yeah, Masayama is a legend, isn't he? I mean, I, yeah. I heard the story, right, right, right it, but I don't know. You know I no, know I, was, I trained at his dojo for two years. Yeah, that's that's equivalent of ten or twelve years anywhere else, isn't it? <laughs> like, I should think so, especially when it was winter, freezing cold, walking around the dojo. It was like, like walking on an ice skating rink. <laughs> All these flies. And, and being the foreigner there, you're going to be the one doing the tough work as well. Yeah. Especially exactly. back then. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to walk around the dojo with a big stick, whack you if you didn't uh, didn't perform well. Yeah, you can't do that today. <laughs> Not allowed. But Not it was the thing to do then, definitely. Now, can I get on to some training stuff with you? Because Yeah, whatever you want, yeah. Fantastic. Because I saw a clip with you talking about some of the judo players being too tense and it really struck a chord because of the boxers that I work with and, and try and say to them being loose. Now I knew what you meant by being loose, you know, so that you, you can, you can, you're still ready to go. You're not loose, weak, you're loose, 
but you've got the power there when you need it. But can, for people who don't understand what you mean about being loose, can you give well, them an idea? Yeah, it's easy to explain. If you the, if you do something for the first time in your life, like ride a bicycle, for instance, you're right tight and you're like this because you're because you're worried and you're and you're unsafe. But as soon yeah. as you learn to ride it a bit easier, you start to relax into it and your arms start to relax. It, it's exactly the same with any kind of boxing training, judo or anything. In the beginning, because you're not proficient at what you're doing, you tend to be really stiff. However, you're dead right. If you can learn to relax, once you've relaxed, the movements seem to become much more fluid and much easier to do. And that, that's basically what it is. It's, it's a lot of confidence, isn't it? You've got to be confident about what you're doing and just learn to breathe, relax, and take it easy and just move lightly, like Cassius Clay, you know, yeah. thing like Butterfly, or like a bee, whatever he was on about. Yeah. He was ever so loose and moving around. And that, that's basically it. It's like riding a motorbike. The first time you ever do it, you're like this. And then once you relax into it, you get it becomes a pleasure to do. Uh, I think that, you know, it's, that's, that's it. it's very hard to do it. But once you've done it, it's very easy. Yeah, and it's, you end up with that flow then, don't you? Where you're not, if you're too tense, you can be off balance too easy. If you can be yeah. loose with it, you can absorb and move and, and yeah, get around. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the other thing that really struck a chord with me was um, you were talking about entering for a throw and you mentioned it that if somebody tried to do it in three steps to you it's like one step in two turn three start to throw they're not going to get to two because you've swept them after one that's it and, and it, that really struck a chord with me because everything we try to do in our stuff is to if you've got something that takes four things try and bring it down to three and if it takes three try and bring it down to two if it takes two try and bring it down to one you've got it in one you've You've explained it perfectly. It, it's all about it's all about getting in with the the minimum outlay of time and energy. Skill is the learned ability to bring about a predetermined action with the minimum outlay of time and energy. It's exactly what you're saying. You've got to do it as quick as you can, so you can, the whole movement becomes in one, not one here, two there, three there, four. It's got to be. Oof. So it's yeah. a good thing to remember. Skill is the learned ability to bring about a predetermined action with a minimum outlay of time and energy. Exactly, exactly what you said. Yeah, You've yeah, got I it mean, in mind. Oh, well, Comic, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but there was that, there was a clip I saw with you and you were um, having somebody walk round. Yeah. And you were moving round. And then you were explaining to people that you 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 don't once you got to a certain position and you feel yeah. attacked. Yeah, that your foot was there then and he sort of almost ran into it rather than you try to do it. and then yeah. as his feet come together, his balance is really gone. If you get him at that point, you got the sweet spot, so to speak. But, but well, it's, the same as, it's the same as firing a gun or a rifle. You don't aim at the target if the target's moving, you aim just in front of the target. So it's yeah. a similar sort of thing. Wait till the person gets and as he's going there, then you do your movement, your attack, or your hook, or your punch, or whatever it is. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Got, it's hard to explain over the phone, but it's, yeah, that's, that's I know what you're saying. Because we, we always, you were talking also with people about patterns and how you used to find patterns on your opponents by watching them and and noting yeah. it down. And, and would you mind explaining for people how you did that, how you worked somebody out? Yeah, if you if you watch a boxer, you watch anybody that's in a combat, combat sport, they, if you watch them for five minutes, you'll find three or four times in that five minutes, they have a certain movement pattern that they do. And they'll do it over again, then they might look, do it not do it for a couple of minutes, then they'll do it again. But they always do the same pattern. So what you've got to do is identify the pattern and just be there just fractionally before he gets there. If yeah. you can understand what I mean. So if the person's moving in front of me this way, I'm, I know he's going to go that way. 
and then he might change that way. As soon as you feel him going this way, you get ready to go that way. So you 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 spot his pattern of movement. That that's the principle of it. Obviously, it's easier to explain on a map or in the boxing ring, but that's yeah. the idea. Wait, don't don't attack, don't shoot the gun too early, don't attack too early, because he would have moved out of the way. Basically, yeah. that's it. It's, it's, it's a very simple thing. It's not not rocket science, is it? No, but but, but that understanding of seeing a pattern, recognizing the pattern, being ready for the pattern, and then attacking yeah. the pattern is is not as easy to do as it as it sounds, is it? Boxing boxing's a typical example, isn't it? Because boxers have a, they, they go over and over the same thing. They do it a lot of times. Yeah. Um, and I think you know you've just got to you've just got to identify what they're doing and be there just a bit quicker than them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, it's that simple. I tell my guys, give them a pattern and then take it away. It's like giving them a present and taking it away. You give them a pattern, knowing that they're going to come for that pattern, and then the next time you're not doing it, it might take two or three to give them a pattern, and then and then you hopefully they'll go for it. But it, and it's the same thing you, it's, as understanding their patterns. You've got to play the game of giving them a false pattern as well, and things like that. And yeah, it's all, it's like a game of chess, isn't it, on the mat, or yeah. in the ring? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> with blood and bruises. <laughs> But I mean, you you finish most of your fights very very quickly. Um, out of every, out of a hundred fights, I've probably finished seventy five of them within the first minute. Yeah, I mean, which is an incredible record, <laughs> right? But, but the other twenty five percent of the, you know, may, he may be on the mat for ten minutes, fifteen minutes, it's, you know, twenty minutes or whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, but that, that gives people an idea of just how difficult it is to finish them that quick. Yeah, but do you know why that, that came about? When I first started judo, I was about eight years old, and my father had already been doing it for a year. And um, he was a taxi driver, and he came to, uh, to mum and the kid, you know, me and my sister and said, I'm in a competition at the uh, Royal Albert Hall. So we went along to watch, and it was the London cab drivers versus the Metropolitan Police. Right. My dad was only five foot eight, and the guy that he fought was six foot one, and he looked like a giant compared to him. So the, the 10 taxi drivers came out, the 10 police came out on the mat. I'd never seen Judo before, and my dad was the first to fight. They came out, they sat down, bowed, stood up. The referee called the first two out, which my dad and this big, tall policeman, because in those days you had to be six foot to be a policeman. Yeah. And uh, the referee said, begin. They took hold. He moved three steps to one way, and my dad swept the guy's feet away. He fell flat on his back. The referee called point, and that was it. It was ended. Three yeah. seconds, it was finished. I spent the rest of my judo career trying to beat somebody in under three seconds. I've never done it. Right, got you. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. That's a great spent, story, isn't it? That is really great. It, it, it was a, it was a, what we talked about earlier. It was a pattern of movement that he knew what he was doing. You know, he just got there before the other guy. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. and but that to have that stick in your mind as well and be the goal going forward at that young age tells something about your mindset, doesn't it? As well. Yeah, exactly. I mean. Um, during all the fights I've had, I mean, I can send you some pictures of, you can see in the background, the clock starts at 10 minutes and it's nine minutes, 58 seconds or 56 seconds and the, the contest is over. <laughs> yeah, that, just missed it. <laughs> you, get, you, get much, you get a much longer rest that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't get paid overtime, as we say in boxing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But to give people an idea, that's the equivalent, really, of knocking everybody out in the first round, in the first, well, including the count in the first minute. It's, it's really it. equivalent. That's and to get a knockout is hard work. You can knock them out in the first 15 seconds, it's even better. You get a longer <laughs> Exactly. <move. laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, that's how difficult it is. And we're talking at... at, at super high levels as well aren't we we're not talking at um 
you know, at local club level, these fights, we're talking at British, European, world, yeah. Olympic Hello. level fighting. I mean, it's, it's, because there's levels and levels. And, and again, it's something that a lot of people don't understand that, that there's this massive difference between Olympic level and club level and county level and area level. But, but what your what your listeners must remember is that you've got to put in the work to get to that level. You've really got a lot of work into it. Yeah, That's I mean, an incredible amount. I mean, how many hours a day were you training just on the physical side of things to get ready for the Olympics and for superstars? Um, well, for the superstars, a lot, a lot more than uh, the Olympics because in the superstars there's ten different events. Yeah. Cycling, swimming, canoeing, weightlifting, uh, gym tests, and so on. You know, so you have to do a little bit of each every day. Right. So the, the period of time for the stars was a lot longer, but not so strenuous as uh, yeah. as judo. Judo was fitness training in the morning, technique training in the afternoon, and actual sparring in the evening. What you would class as sparring. Yeah. So it be about in in all six hours a day. That's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. It's got to be a lot, isn't it? You know, the, yeah. the more you sweat in training, the less you sweat on the day. Yeah, that's true. So true. So true. I mean, again, for people, that tells, gives people an idea of levels because you've got, you're doing, say, six hours a day training. Most people are lucky to do four hours a week. You know, they go to the club twice a week or something like that. That's why there's these levels, not only just the skill, but the amount of work that goes in and hard work as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realise just how much hard work goes in. No pain, no gain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, you see, I hear it all the time. Is, well, they're just, they're just skilled. Yeah, they're just really skillful. Yeah, but they are doing like 30-odd hours a week of this. <laughs> yeah. That does help. But, uh, I mean, out of all the things that you've done, uh, you know, if we just look at the superstars one for a moment, which, which one was your the one that you're sort of like most fond of, remember the most, or most proud of, whichever, whichever way around? Yeah, sport, you mean, or just... Yeah, just? Just on the superstars one, we'll come to the judo one after. Or, well, you can do both, superstars and judo. Oh, I don't know. Uh, it's just winning, isn't it? You've got... Yeah. You know, you're in, you're in it to win it, aren't you? <laughs> That's yeah. the way I look at it. I don't think I've enjoyed doing one thing more than another, but the superstars, for instance, gave me a new lease of life after doing judo because I was right. in the British judo team for like just on 20 years. And then oh, when yeah. I stopped when I stopped doing judo, I went into the superstars and it, it was a new lease of life. I was 33 when I went into it. So, you know, I, yeah. weren't, I weren't young. It was just that doing different sports other than doing judo, that's, so the training was all different. It was it was much more exciting because you, you know, basketball, for instance, I was never any good at basketball. I had to learn how to, to do it quickly. You know, there's yeah. loads of things that I had to learn. So it was much, I think the superstars was more fun. Yeah. I mean, I mean rowing, yeah. rowing, for instance. I never got beaten in the rowing boat. No, no. No, because I went and had proper lessons and learned from the best person in Britain at the time. Um, cycling, I never got beaten in cycling. Although yeah. it wasn't it wasn't a long race, but I went and learned about the bike. Not only about how to train on the bike, but how to set the bike up. Um, which right. other people didn't do, you know, they didn't uh, they they didn't look at it from a um, from a you know, a professional point of view. Yeah, yeah. Cause it, I do. We always got the impression that you really knew what you were doing when we were watching Superstars. It was like that you just said it there, professional. They, some people weren't as professional in their approach. Well, no, I mean, you, you imagine that you've got eight people going to race each other on a bike. They supply the bikes. They just got on the bike and cycled it. I made sure that, you know, exactly where the seat, I had all the measurements written down on a bit of paper. And I had right. my dad there beside me sorting it all out, you know. So it was, and the shoes for the for the squat thrust, and the angle that you're on the bar when you do the arm dips. I didn't hang up vertical. I I I was on the bar at that at that angle because 
you get more thrust from your legs. And the, the squat thrust, for instance, most people did it on the flat of their hand, on the, you know, on, like on the table like that. But I yeah. did it with my fingers up here. Right. So it made me two or three inches higher so that I could bring my knees through quicker and more right. room to bring your knees through. All those little things are so important. And when you train and when you, you know, you're getting fit for an event, they're the things you have to think about. So it's, it's very important. I mean, that, just, for, just, just for instance, the, the squat thrust, to, to, to do it with, on your fingers like that, you see yeah. that, instead yeah. of your hand flat, brings you up three inches higher. Three inches higher means your legs can come through much easier. You don't scrape the floor so much. Um, and there's less drag and so on. I mean, it's just all little, little, just tiny little things that are important. But is that analysing like that, that, that analytical brain, that way of looking at it, is that something that you've had anyway or that you got from your judo? Because I know from your judo, you'd be marking down on a gi where, where people grab and how they move so that you can combat it when you, when you come up against them. Okay. Well, when I first went to Japan, I, I came across a, uh, a judo person there. He's since died, just recently died. Um, what, his name is Watanabe. He could do everything on the left-hand side as well as he could do it on the right-hand side. So anything he could do on the right, he could do on the left just as easy. And I couldn't make that out when I first went there because I was only ever taught on the right-hand side. No one ever taught me how to do anything on the left-hand side. But when I saw him doing it, then I started to practice it myself. I realized that I was only doing half of my own sport because I was only doing it on the right-hand side. So think about boxing. If, you, if you're a southpaw, right? Yeah. Why, why not? Why not? Why not why not as well? Yeah. So you learn both sides of it. So I couldn't that, agree more. Yeah. I don't know if that analysis sounds right to you, but it's the same in the suicide. As soon as I saw, um, like the rowing, rowing, for instance, um, or canoeing, which will give you a better example. Yeah. When you can, I saw them putting the the oar in so quickly into the into the water. Boom, 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 boom. And I thought. Well, they're, 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 they're doing so much work, they're not getting anywhere. And when I went and had a lesson, the guy said, you, the further you reach forward with the oar, the more water you can pull back. Yeah. He said, if you dig the oar in by the side of the boat, by the time you dug it in, the boat's gone. So you're only yeah. pushing a little bit. So all those little things are very, very important. They're all, they're all about how, how skill works. You know, yeah. Uh, what we yeah, Listen, it, I'm not being rude, but I'm going to have to go because I've got somebody waiting for me. And um, if you want to, if you want to talk again, there's there's no problem. Any time you want to do it, it'd be lovely. That'll be fantastic. Right. Again, thank you so much. It's been an absolute mm -hmm. privilege for me. Thank you again. And uh, any, yeah. any time you want to do it, there's no problem at all. All right. Great. Lovely. Thank Let's you so much. Good luck to your listeners. You. If anybody Take comes care. over here, tell them to come and see me. We will. We will. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening, guys and gals. Remember to tell everyone to join in next time to the Old Fat Coach.